Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, if you're just joining us, this is our regular Friday live webcast, and uh, we've heard remarks from Mr. LaRouche, and we're now going to move on to the question and answer period, and I'd like Cody Jones to come up and ask the first question. All right, good evening. So our first question comes from a group of institutional contacts who have a question about someone who himself should be institutionalized. So they say, Mr. LaRouche, this week, President Obama faced new revelations on a number of scandals that could lead to his impeachment. In addition to the Associated Press, it was revealed that the Justice Department was also tracking the phone records of Fox News reporters. There are new whistleblowers coming forward on the Benghazi 9-11 story, and Rep. Daryl Issa now, for the first time, appears to have the support of the Republican House leadership to move forward with that investigation. We would like to ask about the scandal involving political targeting by the Internal Revenue Service, a scandal that has already reached the White House as the result of new revelations that the President's General Counsel had a series of meetings with the General Counsel of the IRS. The behavior of the IRS impacts on every American household. Now, as accusations of political targeting of Obama opponents gains traction, the IRS is about to assume far greater power in overseeing the implementation of Obamacare. And just as a note, they've assembled a task force of over 2,100 employees at the IRS whose job will be the implementation and policing of Obamacare. And to put the cherry on top of it, Sarah Hall Ingram, who was actually the commissioner of the tax-exempt unit at the IRS during the scandal period, is the one who will actually be in charge of overseeing the Obamacare operations at the IRS. So they say, it is perhaps the greatest expansion of IRS power and personnel in decades. How do you assess these new unfolding revelations surrounding the president and his team? Well, let's talk about the Congress, for example. It's a good thing to talk about this time. Now, the members of Congress, I must say, I respect, have respected some things for, for them, many of them, but not on this account. They are acting like damned fools in assuming that their privileges as members of the Congress somehow mean that they have to give in to this sort of legislation. And th that this is the point. Are you willing and you've got to, we're going to have to confront the members of the Congress in particular with their guilt on this point. Are they going to assist in legislation and other measures which will cause accelerated death rates of our own population in the United States on a massive scale? Therefore, the Congress has got to stop being the towel boy for Wall Street and Britain. The point is that people have got to stand up and say, no. And we have authorities, you know, there are authorities which are greater than any of those that you've mentioned so far inside the United States. The Constitution of the United States, for example, the powers of the Supreme Court, all of these, this garbage can be eliminated quite peacefully, but riotously, of course, by just those measures. The Congress has got to find its honesty and its guts. And the people who they serve should enforce that on those members of the Congress. Stop being asses. You've got to, you've got to hold up to the U.S. Constitution in its original intention. You've got to understand the lessons of these as intention in the history of this nation. We are not subject to, to a European policy. We, we created a United States to escape from Europe's policies. That was from the beginning. It was the essence of the Massachusetts Bay Colony operation. And the renewal of that, all the struggle to establish the U.S. Constitution was that. We do not submit to foreign agreements, entanglements with foreign powers. And by, by on that basis, 
Glass-Steagall prevails. And Obama and his friends are canceled. It's a violation of our Constitution in the very deepest matters of principle. No one can come into this United States and say because they've got made a treaty, a crooked treaty, with a bunch of crooks in New York City and a, crooks, a bunch of crooks in, in London and in, in Manhattan and whatnot, they can't come in to us and say they are going to inf create and enforce a provision on our nation which is contrary to the intention of our Constitution. It's an alien conception. We try to be fr you know, friendly with European nations as, as that. But on this matter, no. This is our United States. And these fellows better keep get themselves out of our United States pretty quick because you're going to get some very angry American citizens demanding that happen. But our Constitution, our, our legacy demands that. We are reinforced by our commitment, our oath of citizenship. We are forced to reject and overthrow the provisions of this bunch of crooks.